Hey, what's up everyone? Rob Rendered here. It's early morning here in uh, Madeira Island, on Madeira Island in Portugal. I'm gonna be talking about something really important to me and uh, this might be um, going into different areas, but it's all going to be talking about sovereignty. Um, sovereignty over my mind, uh, being able to understand and not be controlled by my mind. Uh, sovereignty over my body be able to know what's going on with my body <clears throat> and being able to do something about it to be able to look after it like a garden and not have to go to um, doctors who um, have a tendency just to give you a pill uh, to mask the symptoms so uh, sovereignty over my body and then um, talking a little bit about sovereignty over where I live, um, when I work, how I um, how I educate my children, how I de-educate them from uh, my own uh, stuff that I'm working on, and how to um, enable them to be able to critically think and have sovereignty over their mind. So education is really important for me now. I'm a father, you know, education of my children and uh, money. Um, you know, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Bitcoin and uh, you know, sovereign money and, and uh, really talking a little bit about that just in my, uh, my understanding and how I think it um, along with this whole movement towards um, sovereignty is, um, Bitcoin is going to change uh, the whole world and yeah and sovereignty over my movement. So I'm an, I've been a digital nomad since oof, I, I made the decision to go uh, go that way in 2006, I think. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go find a nice place to sit and discuss that. Here's a, here's a beautiful fruit and veg market. This is a lovely square. This is one of the coffee shops I use. Might be a bit busy. I'm going to go and sit in nature and uh, get my uh, energy, uh, have a sort of nature shower. There's a beautiful park down here. And again, that's uh, another part of being sovereign is understanding what works, how to get results. And you need to bathe in nature as often as possible. And uh, I'm going to go do that now. This is, I'm just going to give you a little shot of where I am. There's a little uh, fountain there, there's a big fountain over there. It's, uh, it's a really beautiful park. I come in here um, when, when I need to work on myself or when I um, <clears throat> need to work on clients, I need to get quiet. Um, it's important to uh, settle down. Uh, it's a quote I saw yesterday um, the wave says to the ocean how do I become like you and the ocean says just settle down so when you want to connect with everything you just need to calm and quiet quiet down the mind and then uh, you pick up on information or your intuition much more easily so uh, sovereignty um, I'm gonna be talking about this because um, I've been talking with my wife about well, we talk a lot every night about uh, the, the ideas of sovereignty. We don't say, let's talk about sovereignty. What we're talking about is how do we enable um, our children to critically think and not be, uh, to optimize their learning experience. And my wife's read up a um, huge amount, talked to a lot of people about the best way to educate um, our children and it's a little bit like a, a flipping burgers on a barbecue the the less all you just got to do is make sure they're not burnt I find that diff I find that difficult 
uh, I often say I, I'm quite scared. I often say, oh, be careful, be careful. Um, and I have really had to work on um, sort of more of a fixed mindset and, um, you know, fearfulness with them. So um, in since becoming a father, I've realized I've, I have a lot to uh, unlearn and a lot to get rid of to optimize my children's behavior. So we talk a lot about this. Uh, I, it's difficult, um, but that's, you know, the in internal journey is working on yourself is not easy. And what we've come to understand is uh, that play is the most uh, important thing for a child to learn and to get the mind out of them. So when you tell a child how to um, do something, you're taking away the child's ability to learn the, uh, the, um, the opportunity to learn. So it's a little bit like synthesis school, um, which is Elon Musk um, who, you know, uh, invested in that school that his children, that he would want his children to go to. So it's synthesis online. Is probably something that we'll look to enroll our daughter in uh, when she's seven. Uh, it teaches critical thinking and creative problem solving. And so the 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 um, the example they give is uh, quite a big hornet right there. There's quite a, bit, a, a great example of they give them an engine and they leave some tools there and they say, okay, go and um, deconstruct this or something. But they don't, the worst thing you can do is to say, right, this is a screwdriver and this is how it works and this is what you do. But that's what our schooling system does is based on the industrialized system of, uh, you know, everyone sits down, follow orders, no one questions uh, the authority. Um, and, and, it's, and, and you can see that it's children are told how to learn. They're told what to do and everyone is different. So in the census school, they'll just, the child has to, work it out themselves and so um that's just fundamentally what i'm just saying is that's the re that's really turned me on to this um getting the mind out of uh, our minds our mind my mind as a father out of my children's learning out of telling them what to do it's what we humans like to do is to tell others what to do and so that ties in with my um, my experience as a strength and conditioning coach and injury prevention specialist for Chelsea Football Club, for a lot of elite athletes, you know, that was uh, on my, the physical career, you know, working with high-level athletes that I did for many years. Um, what I came to realize was <clears throat> I initially started out by getting too involved, like uh, it's my ego, you know, I wanted to say, oh, Make sure your knee stays straight, lined over the toe. Make sure this, make sure that. And what I came to realize over the time is I had to get the athlete's mind out of their body. It was their mind that was causing the problem. Uh, and then, so that ties in beautifully with getting the mind out of my child's um, learning. And then I started to realize that actually the mind and the emotions and fears and, and our perceptions are completely tied to our body's pain, um, you know, uh, illnesses, etc. But that is so far from the paradigm that's out there at the moment. Um, there is some neuroscience coming out showing pain tags if you look into that. But what I'm seeing with my experiences and my work with high le now with high level athletes or, you know, um, executives, uh, billionaires, whatever, or just normal, you know, normal people, um, is that people's physical problems are so, uh, you know, fundamentally underlying every physical problem, there's an emotional cause. Not every single time, but pretty much always. And so that's where I spend my time doing is, is working on deconstructing people's minds and their beliefs. And because that's how, uh, in, in deconstructing, our frameworks is how we free ourselves yeah so with our children we want them to be free to learn um, I want my body to be free from my mind because my mind limits and restricts it um, as the Tibetan medical system that I've studied 
uh, chakra is a knot. It's when the mind gets knotted around a particular issue and it shows up in the body. So my career took me from being uh, overly, you know, my mind thinking it knew what was going on with the body to realizing it had no idea and it had to get out. And what you do is you fundamentally give the body the possibility to uh, resolve things itself because the physical intelligence is amazing. Uh, bear with me, I'm jumping a little bit here. So that's, that's um, where my work is involved now, is helping people become sovereign, as in free from their minds. So it's a deconstruction of, of all their limitations and restrictions and ancestral stuff that's coming in and cultural and collective and religious programming. I deconstruct that. So we become sovereign. Because at the most moment, everyone is really uh, just controlled by their parents' programming, the societal programming, and um, and that brings me on to monetary programming. So we're all controlled by this fiat experiment, the the monetary system, and it, you know, um, five, four or five years ago, uh, I was I, I knew nothing about investing or money. I didn't really understand it. So. I I wanted to be I wanted to master that so I I took responsibility and then I started to read everything I could about value money uh, monetary systems and it it took me on to that gave me the opportunity to meet someone who told me about Bitcoin and at first I didn't understand it so what I did because I take responsibility is I spoke to a, a computer software programmer stack guy and asked him to to give me uh, you know a consult with him or lecture me about blockchain I didn't understand it at first but I kept going bit by bit um, a bit by bit I started to learn more and then uh, years later thousands of hours of listening to podcasts listening to people I've started to understand that um, the social inequality there is now, um, the the uh, war industrial complex is is all um, it, it's there because of this fiat experiment where we where the governments intervene, economists and governments minds intervene in a system that should be self-regulating. So again, it ties in with the education ties in with my understanding of the principles of the mind and the body Taoist principles and Bitcoin is this um, uh, a monetary system that can't be tampered with and the government can't print money for wars like uh, the so it actually keeps governments honest um, they can't get involved when when the mind gets involved it screws things up I'm, I'm butchering Bitcoin a little bit but you you have to spend a, many hours to understand it and I did that and now I understand it and again the um, sovereign money you know I, I I am responsible for my money the the fiat the, the dollar or the pound or whatever is being printed uh, and everyone because the you know the monetary system the media system if you believe it you're you're going to get wrecked and so sovereignty over your mind is sovereignty and understanding critically thinking about the stuff you put in your head and so if you look at mainstream media um, no one's questioning money printing but it's a tax is the the wealthy um, you know the the inequality between the rich and the poor is is growing because of this monetary printing it's a broken system it's not working it's just making things worse so there's a this sovereign money is coming now and you'll see that uh, it ties in overall with this idea of freedom being able to um, hold your own money and not having it inflated and stolen by the government or not having economist experts get involved then I go on to health and everything we've been told about health is wrong if you read mainstream media, you're gonna, your health is going to get wrecked. Um, in the 70s, the experts, based on science, said that fat was cause of heart disease 
and you need to eat low fat, high carbohydrate, um, you know, fibrous diet. The human race is wrecked now. The heart disease is all time high. It's now being understood that that science was flawed, but you're not allowed to question science, right? Because they're always right. But anyway, um, so it's very much to do with metabolic and metabolic health and insulin. And in fact, um, uh, high carbohydrate, high carbohydrate diets, junk food, and uh, low fat um, is extremely damaging for people's health. Then the whole, um, so this got me into looking at statins. Statins are lo cholesterol lowering drugs. Well, if cholesterol, um, lowering your cholesterol was thought to be, uh, well, cholesterol was the cause of heart disease. That was wrong. It was, it was based on false, poor research. And now there's a, now they're still pushing statins on people, lowering people's cholesterol. It's actually been shown now that people with high cholesterol live longer. Low cholesterol makes you more, uh, your immune system weaker and more susceptible to, to viruses and infections. So you start to, you, you need, to, it's just critical thinking. So the, I'm not telling you this for you to, you know, if you want to go look at this, go look at it. I'm talking about me. This is, uh, this is important for me. So I am setting up um, a channel around this sovereignty because I, I got my parents off statins and my brother off statins. And, uh, you know, some there, there was a health condition that was affecting my mum for a long time. She got off statins, it was gone within three days. She'd had it for years. Um, if you, there's a, a doctor, Dr. Asim, I can't remember his surname off the top of my head. He's now showing that it's um, the statin, uh, that whole industry, billion, billions of dollars industry is based on fraud. And it, it, I think people are waking up. I used, people always used to go, there's a spiritual revolution, everyone's waking up. I was like, no, they're not. <laughs> they're not, because I work with spirit. People, all these spiritual gurus come to me because they're, you know, they've got problems and I, and I resolve it for them. But what I am seeing now, there's a, with this COVID, uh, the government's overreach, um, people are starting to wake up and go, wow, mainstream media is, is BS. Um, it's based on clicking, you know, how do we get people to click? Um, I saw this with Bitcoin. Um, you know, I've been in this for four years now. I've seen articles come out by independent journalists saying, oh, um, this bank thinks it's uh, rat poison or, you know, Bitcoin's used by criminals, you shouldn't touch it. But I know at the same time, that bank has been buying Bitcoin at lower prices. So the, the mainstream media, the banking system, uh, the food industry, uh, which um, is, is the food industry, which is the cause of obesity, you know, and, and our poor health, they control the narrative. And you, everyone needs to wake the fuck up and start critically thinking and looking at everything. So this idea of a sovereign mind, and when I say sovereign mind, I have to be careful because the mind lies to us. It's actually sovereignty over our mind, sovereignty over our body, sovereignty over our money, sovereignty over our movement. So um, I'm look, maybe I'm looking to set up here. It's a beautiful place. Um, I've got loads of ideas and projects uh, my wife and I have a project um, around uh, children's education. Um, you know, I, I spend all day, every day helping people um, gain sovereignty over their health, sovereignty over their minds. And so uh, I'm kind of just putting this out there. It's something that's bubbling up inside. I'm not sure what, what it's all going to be called, but... Uh, yeah, I'm. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna start actioning on this and see see where it goes. Um, I'd love you to be along for the ride. Uh, if you're interested in that, this is. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot more about um, how to gain freedom over your mind, peace. Um, you know how to. You know I'm working on my critical thinking. 
Um, maybe I'm not an expert on that yet, but I'm, uh, I would say I've spent 25 years um, working on, uh, definitely on concepts of uh, peace and uh, fulfillment and joy and how to remove limiting beliefs, how to resolve physical problems. That I understand. And so my critical thinking is a journey, um, one that I want to be a leader for my children. Uh, you, you don't educate, you educate by being a leader, by showing. And so um, with my body, you know, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm 49, um, six pack, strong. I can do 20 chin-ups. There's, that makes me proud. Uh, I have freedom over my body. Um, I can resolve anything, um, any problem, any worry, any anxiety that I have, any fear on the spot by using my, um, my internal insight and that I have a school, Med Meditation OS, where I have students that I teach how to do this for themselves, how to gain sovereignty over their mind. That's Meditation OS. OS stands for Operating System. And I'm going to be talking more and uh, about educating your children. So if you're a father or a mother, this would be useful you know, for you. Um, I probably haven't covered everything, but I just wanted to get that. Check, there's a beautiful butterfly. I don't know if you can... Uh, there was a beautiful butterfly just came over. So I'm going to go and have a, um, I can't remember the word, a gorito, I think is like a cortado in Portuguese. Have a little coffee. Um, thanks for listening. Maybe a bit of a ramble, but just want to get this out there, uh, the energy out there and start moving towards um, a sort of a center for sovereignty uh, of the body, mind and spirit. Okay, thanks so much for listening and I'll talk to you soon.